pump tracks are amazing to train your coordination and endurance and of course your skills. So today's video is about how to pump and the most common errors I see as a full-time mountain bike skills coach. Welcome, my name is Roxy and in case you're not yet subscribed, click that subscribe button. First off, I want to share what is a pump track. A pump track is a circular circuit with rollers. These are the pump waves and berms. The goal is to maintain or even accelerate without pedaling by using your body to pump. I love pump tracks because anyone, no matter your level, age or type of bike, can have fun on a pump track and can really improve his or her skills on a pump track. What do you improve on a, ton a pump track? You improve your timing, your coordination, your strength and endurance because you're constantly moving. And also you improve your anticipation and your feeling for the bike. Most people overcomplicate pumping, so in this video I want to keep it stupid simple. If you simplify pumping, there's actually just two things about it. One, using your arms and legs, and two, waiting and unwaiting. If you do this at the right time, then you're already pumping. So let's look at how it works. The goal of pumping is to generate speed without pedaling. To achieve this, we must extend and bend our arms and legs to wait and unweight the bike with the right timing. So when is the right timing? Put simply, where the most tightly curved part of the transition is, as this is where the compression is. You have to brace against this compression and, in order to accelerate, you have to brace and extend against this compression. It helps to visualize the movements on a pump track like weighting and unweighting your body on a scale, on a traditional scale. You remember these? By using your arms and legs. In the dip between the waves, you make yourself heavy and then start to extend against the compression of the transition. This energy you give into the bike in the form of an extension transforms into acceleration. The aim now is to lose as little speed as possible as you ride up the roller. As soon as you reach the top of the bump, you need to make yourself light, so you need to unweight by bending your arms and legs. Then. Next is guiding the bike over the roller and down into the downward transition by extending your arms and anti-rowing the bike forward. This keeps your tires in contact with the ground and you can prepare for the next compression in the following dip. Then if it's a small roller, like this one, the next dip follows immediately, so you need to wait and unweight again straight away. So to summarize, you need to be as light as possible at the top of the roller, you need to be heavy and bracing against the transition gradually extending into it to generate speed. Gradual is an essential keyword here because the speed of your movement depends on the shape of the roller. On small rollers, like here, the movement is fast and crisp. On large rollers, the movement is slower and smoother. So do not extend your arms and legs when you're on the steepest part of the downslope, but the most tightly curved part of the transition. Sometimes the difference in timing can be subtle, but you have to wait until the compression builds up in the dip of the roller and then straighten up against it. The nature of the movement, so the waiting and unweighting by bending and extending arms and legs, is generally very similar in every roller. It's just the speed and range of motion that changes according to the sides of the roller. What's generally essential is that you stand heavily and balanced on your feet the whole time and that you keep the cranks level. Let's now look at a few common mistakes. Perhaps you'll recognize yourself in one of these. No arm and leg work. Many riders use too little range of motion in their arms and legs and literally stay stiff throughout the pump track. If you have this problem, first try to passively absorb the contours of the rollers by bending and extending your arms and legs before you focus on an active pumping movement. This will help you to get to know the range of motion. 
sudden extension at the wrong time. Many riders believe they have to pump into the bike or initiate the stretching movement as soon as the rear wheel reaches the downslope. If this is a large roller, though, this is way too early, so the bike will not accelerate. Collapsing in the compression phase. Riding a pump track is a lot of hard work. Riders who are pre-fatigued or physically weaker are often unable to apply or maintain the necessary counter force during the compression phase. They collapse and thus absorb the compression, which leads to the opposite of the desired. It causes you to slow down. Too much forward-backward movement. Bikers often try to increase their speed by shifting their body forwards and backwards. Although this may feel helpful, it does not lead to the desired increase in speed as the compression phase is not braced against properly. Tires lose contact with the ground on the bumps. If you brace against the compression too long or start softening and absorbing your bike too late, your wheels will lose contact with the ground as you increase your riding speed. This makes it difficult to maintain the ideal timing and rhythm, especially on rollers in rapid succession, which can lead to a loss of speed and control. Were you able to detect your error? If not, let me do it. Let's work together to find your causal error, not just a consequential error, and to correct it, because that's what will skyrocket your skills. You also want to know how to ride berms in pump tracks? Let me know in the comment section below. Grateful to have you here till the end. Check out this video. This is my podcast. Subscribe and see you again for my next video.